Elliot Friedman, uh, host of 32 Thoughts, joins me now. Good morning, Elliot. Thanks for doing this, man. Good, my pleasure, JD. Good morning to you, too. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so uh, let's just dive right into it. I, I want to get into a couple of Leafs things today because, yeah, they, they've had some transactional news as of late. Uh, I'm going to start with Nick Robertson. Um, he ends his holdout, and it happens kind of quickly. He signs the, the one-year deal for 875. W- what is your impression of where this goes from here? Was this something to kind of calm the waters? Are they still going to explore trades for him? Or is your impression that, you know, he is legitimately going to be starting the season with this team? I think, I think all of that, J.D., is going to be determined over the next couple of weeks. Um, I, I don't think the Maple Leafs are unhappy that, they're, that things look crowded. Uh, I, I do believe part of this is to create internal competition for spots, make people maybe th- uh, be a little bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the one thing I always say is that if someone calls you and gives you what you want, then you go and you make your move. But if that doesn't happen in the short term, I don't think Toronto is going to have a problem at all with a training camp where they've got some players looking around and saying, where do I fit here? Or Mm. I can do the math and somebody's going to leave. What are the chances it's going to be me? Uh, I don't think they're unhappy with that kind of setup at all. So then let's move to the Pacioretty part of this. They signed, or sorry, they haven't signed him yet. They bring him in on the PTO, but it seems yeah. like it's going to be a done deal. Like it's one of those. Sure does. Yeah. D- hey, don't worry about it. You're not really trying out. So how does that kind of fit into the competition? If they're telling a 36 year old who's coming off of two Achilles tears that, you know, he's basically going to be guaranteed a spot on this roster. Well, the, the, you're basically is doing a lot of work there. Like if Pacioretty comes and has a terrible camp and he, mm-hmm. and he doesn't look good, then, you know, then we've got a problem. Yeah. Like I, I think, you know, Pacioretty is smart enough and he's been around long enough to know that he at least has to perform here. Like doesn't have to give them any red flags in the preseason. If something shows up where either he can't move or he can't play or it creates a concern, then that contract's not going to happen. What we've got, but if he just basically comes and, yep, he's ready to go, maybe he doesn't light up the preseason, but you're not seeing anything that really concerns you, he's going to be on the team. Um, so he has to fulfill his end of the deal. Mm-hmm. Look, people aren't stupid. They can see what's going on around them. Um, I think the, the interesting thing is it's that over the next couple of weeks and in, in, in these games, it's going to be interesting to see what the roster is, who plays a lot. Um, you know, that's, that's usually one of the tells, J.D., is, you know, your superstars. You know, Patrick King was one of those guys. I used to ask a question early in the year, how many exhibition games do you want? And a lot of the top players would say one or two. Patrick Kane was one of the few. He'd say, if you could tell me I could play five or six, I would play five or six. Mm. But generally, the guys who play more games are the guys who are on the bubble. So you know, one of the things you look for is who plays a lot. That's number one. Number two, now, who plays on the road? Because a lot of these teams, what they do is they don't send their top players on road games. Now, there's a minimum you have to hit. You have to have what's called, I think, eight veterans. But, you know, the the, the, the preseason games, you know, to to take care of your fans who have to buy them as part of your season ticket package, you generally make sure your best players play only at home and not on the road. I also find who goes on the road. And, J.D., that's how we're going to figure out who's on the bubble here. Mm -hmm. It's who gets a lot of games, who plays on the road, Things like that. Mm. So, but with Pacioretty, you're it, like, where's your feeling or where's your understanding as when it comes to his health? Because it sounds like what um, we're discussing here is that it's not going to be about him scoring goals. Like they're not looking for him to be lighting up the preseason, as you said. It's something where, hey, yeah. are you skating okay? And are you triggering red flags when it comes to your health? But where is he yes. at, with your understanding today? I think he's pretty good. I told this story on the pod this morning, but I took my wife and son to see Pink uh, in the summer, the night she was here. I can't wait to see where this is going. This is good. This is great. (laughs) I'm strapped in. I took my wife and son to see Pink at the the Rogers Center uh, in the summer, 
And when we after we parked, we were walking over to the dome, and uh, we walked into him. Oh, okay. And uh, I was like, hey, you know, what are you doing here? And uh, he said, he kind of, the wheels started turning. I really missed it in the moment because I was with my family. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, I'm just here visiting some friends. Well, it's pretty clear he was here, you know, getting tested. <laughs> the leaves were taking a look at him. Um, you know, like I saw him at the end of last season. Washington came in pretty late. Mm-hmm. And I just asked him and, and he said, I'm looking forward to this summer because it's the first time I'm going to, in, in three summers, I'm going to be able to really train properly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Pacioretty is a physical marvel. We did a piece on him years ago, and, you know, he, he like, physically, he is absolutely a gifted human being. And uh, even, like, even by a, a professional athlete standards. So, like, he's... You know, you're thinking as long as he gets the opportunity to train, which he did this summer, he's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So I I think that so he definitely had more of an opportunity to train this summer than any time in the previous two. Um, I think they're hopeful that's going to lead to something (laughs) Like, like, like you said, J.D., in the preseason. I'm not necessarily looking for Pacioretty to score 12 goals in three games, but can he move? Can he cut? Does he have a burst? I think that's the stuff we're all looking for here. I thought where this was going to go is that because I'm uh, an old guy who still likes to go to shows, that you're going to say you and Pacioretty are the same age. You know, how would you feel on your feet standing there after an entire pink concert? Like you watched him the whole time. He was on his feet. He didn't hold his back in the middle of the show. You know, he wasn't shuffling his feet. He didn't make multiple trips to the bar just to be able to get a break. He stood there the entire pink concert and dance. That looks pretty healthy to me. I would have been like, you know what? Case closed. He's ready to go. He's ready to go for camp. Uh, okay. You know so- what? I, got, I give you credit, JD. That's a better story than the one I told. I yeah. should just come up with that. <laughs> you can use it. It's it's yours. Uh, so <laughs> how does Easton Cowan fit into this now? Because now it it seems like it would be next near impossible for him to fit into this roster. I, I don't, I, I don't believe that. I, what I believe for Cowan is that he can, you know, again, he can look and say, boy, there's a lot of contracts here. There's a lot of people signed here. Um, but that doesn't mean you, what they're saying to him is give us a reason to keep you like, do what you did last year, knock on the door, knock it down, uh, make us aware of your presence. You know, the, the thing about a guy like Barube is um, he's if you give him reason to play you, he's going to play you. And the challenge here for Cowan is he can look at, like I said, he can look around and say, boy, there's a lot of bodies here. There's a lot of bodies with NHL contracts here. Like the other thing, too, is, you know, Lorenz is another guy, even though he's on a PTO, the, you know, he could have gone anywhere. He came here probably because a little bit of his, he's a Southwestern Ontario guy, but also maybe he sees opportunity. So there's, there's a, what, what Cowan's got to do is do what he did last year, make everyone notice him, give them a reason to keep him around. And the longer he stays, the more he has an opportunity. Like all he controls is, 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 is the way he plays. And last year it, they showed him, Hey, we noticed, and they kept him around a bit longer. And the same thing will happen this year if he gives them reason to. So, like, we'll see what the math says at the end of the, at the, end of the couple of weeks. But he has to do the same thing he did last season, which was make himself noticeable and make himself hard for them to send down. And so uh, the other guy there, too, is how does that fit for Fraser Minton? Because one of the – deal. Yeah, just I, I feel for him a little bit because he makes the team last season, and yep. now it makes it seem as though, and maybe not to everybody, but that if you're not one of the big talks of camp, and it's not exactly like this team is flush with center depth, that if you're not pushing to make this team, that it feels like a step back. And by all accounts, he's a super intelligent kid. You know, he reads a lot. Uh, he seems to be saying the right things about control what you can control. Um, he's clearly mature beyond his years, but... Do you yep. think that's going to be difficult for him? Or do you think maybe he's going to be a little bit more out of the spotlight because of the Cowan and because of all the roster competition that it won't be such a big story? No, it'll be a big story because this is Toronto, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and I'm not even trying to be glib or make a joke. It's just, well, I'm asking you is. about him on September 13th, so it's kind of yeah. fair for you to point that out. <laughs> like, it's, 
Like, it'll be a story. And, yeah, you know what? Let's just say let, – let's do the if game, okay, J.D.? Let's say he doesn't make the team. Yes, there are people are going to be like, oh, step back, step back. I think that kind of talk is insane. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really do think it's insane that it's not the end of the world. I'm sure Minton would love to make the team. Once again, I'm sure the Leafs would love it if Minton has the same kind of camp he did last year. But I don't think it's the end of the world if he doesn't make the team. Ultimately, what you want is a guy who, when he arrives in the NHL, that he's going to be there for good. Um, but, but it's the same thing. Like, it's his job. Like, I think the Leafs would love it if Minton pushed to make the team again. Because it goes to that competition. It goes to that thing that makes people uncomfortable. Like it's, it's very clear to me that one of the things the Maple Leafs are doing is they are saying, um, we, want, we have a lot of bodies here because we want to create early pressure. Mm-hmm. We don't want this to be a comfortable camp. We don't want people coming here and think, oh, I've got a spot or I've got a spot. They have a couple of weeks to figure this all out. But I think they're looking for this to be a thing where some of their players start looking over their shoulder. And it's Cowan's job and it's Minton's job to push those guys. And I would expect that he's going to come in here and try to and do the exact same thing that he did last year, which was, you know what, we were thinking of sending Minton back after, say, a week, but he deserves to stay. And you know what, now he's earned another day. And now he's earned another day. That's what they want, and it's his job to do that. Well, it certainly doesn't feel like a comfortable camp because the insinuation from a cap standpoint, a roster standpoint, even with these guys pushing, is that uh, at the end of this, there, there will be an odd man out from the forward group. And probably defense, too. Yeah, yeah. it just seems a little bit more clear. Like, they got, they got a lot of defensemen there. Like, yeah. If I'm Timmins, I'm wondering yeah. what's going on here. If I'm Lilligren, I'm, I'm wondering what's going on here. Like, I... I, I do like, like I don't think the I don't think the defensemen some of them are going to feel any more comfortable than those forwards will. Yeah. Well, do you think Hockenpah starts the year on like uh, the IR? Uh, I, I'd have to see him play first. Um, like you know, like I remember when when this whole thing was going on all summer and we're trying to figure out what was going on. JD, mm-hmm. like the word I kept on getting was. He's there to play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when, you know, Tree Living was the GM in Calgary a couple of years ago when they had that great first round series against Dallas. And Hockenpah was really good. Mm-hmm. And he made an impression on him. Like, I, I they, if they didn't want him to play, JD, mm-hmm. they would have given up on this a long time ago. But they worked on it all through the summer. Yeah. So unless he's hurt or can't play for whatever reason, I think he's here to play. Like, he is the kind of guy True Living likes, and he's the kind of guy that Barube likes. So, last thing before I let you go, you know, I have to ask about Marner because I would just, yeah. you know, it just it is what it is. Um, yes. Is this going to be a thing where when they go into the season, they will remain open on extensions throughout the year? Or is this going to be a thing where you go, no, nope, once the season starts, the book is closed on this. See you next offseason. Uh, I think that is to be determined. Um, I can see them saying that. Look, I don't think I don't have a hundred percent of an answer on this yet. I, I have, I have a theory uh, that I'm asking about, and I don't have it nailed down yet, one way or the other. But the one thing you have to remember is the the, the guiding principle I have for this entire negotiation, JD, is that uh, the agent has always said. He said it to me many times. My advice to my clients is you go to unrestricted free agency unless someone gives you a real reason not to. And so until that happens, that is the way I kind of look at this whole situation. If, if Marner was smart, mm-hmm. um, I, and I think he is, the first time he speaks, I would say I would do what McDavid just yeah, did. Yeah. I'm addressing this once and I'm not talking about this again. You know, the other thing that happens to uh, honestly is I remember years ago when Bobrovsky did his first big deal with Columbus, he told the blue jackets, um, if this, if we start the season, I'm not negotiating. Mm. And, and then like two or three months into the season, they got an extension done. Yeah. So it, it, you know, you can say whatever you want about, yes, we're not negotiating during the season, but if a team comes with the deal that you want, you're going to do it. So 
I think it's going to be smart for Marner just to come out and say, I'm doing this once, maybe it's the first day of camp next week, and then I'm not talking about it again. And you know what, to be honest, like the more this gets talked about, I just think the more it hurts him in the market. And yeah, correct. I'm just as guilt I'm just as guilty about that as anyone else because it's my job. But I think it like I think it hurts him in particular, this kind of conversation. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And that's why I agree with the approach that it should be and you know, if I was doing a theory and, you know, thirty two thoughts returns to the regular rotation next week. Uh, so we get to try to hear your theory, but mine would just simply be it, it doesn't benefit you at all to be discussing a contract in season or having that get out there because that is just going to fan flames throughout the season. And, you know, we saw it happen with Nylander last year, but that's William Nylander. And then he did have a little bit of a lull after the contract extension. Could you imagine that was Mitch Marner? And, you know, given his history and where this team is at, I just, I, I actually think that it's a, it, it's kind of a risk that you can't take um, as an organization, as a player. So, yeah, I, I think I would lead towards the what the agent likes to say and what he likes to do and where this thing ends up. Uh, Elliot, thanks so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you had a great summer. And, again, very excited for the return of the, the show to its regular rotation, man. Thanks very much, JD. Hope you had a great summer, too. Thanks, pal.